Hello and welcome to the third in a series of screencasts about the Unidata Integrated Data Viewer. The Unidata IDV team will guide you through this instructional video to assist you in better understanding the IDV. In the last screencast, we examined how to subset model data via the Data Sources property menu. If you have not watched that screencast, we encourage you to do so as this screencast is a follow-up to the second one. In this screencast, we will further examine how to subset gridded model data, but this time we will look at the Displays panel in the Field Selector. So far, for these screencasts, we have been looking at NAM data. Let's change things up a bit by looking at some GFS data instead. Let's start at the Data Choosers tab, which is the area where you select the type of data you wish to display. Let's navigate to some GFS data in the IDV catalog tree. Once you have selected the data source type, click the Add Source button. We will now select a field we wish to display. Let's say Geopotential Height at Isobaric Surface. This action reveals a number of choices available to the user in the Displays panel. The Displays panel is divided into two areas. The top area is where you choose the type of display to render your data. We'll cover this area in greater depth in a future screencast. The bottom area is where you can subset your gridded data. There are four tabs available to you. Note that you are already familiar with the Times tab from the second screencast. Also note the Region and Stride tabs are captured in the Spatial Subset tab of the Data Sources property menu. These are the same interfaces that are available in the Data Sources property menu, but in a different location. An important point to realize is if you made a subset selection in the Data Sources properties, as we did in the second screencast, this choice will appear as the default subset option in the Displays panel. You can specify default subsets in this manner, but back out of your choice by deselecting the Use Default option. Let's select a region in the map to make our data request a more manageable size. The one interface we have not looked at previously is the Level tab, which we'll spend some time talking about. Let's select the Level tab. All the levels that are available in the model are shown here. Note you can select individual levels with the left mouse button. You can select a range with the shift left mouse button. For this exercise, let's select all levels. Click Create Display. This action will pull the gridded data across the network and create our geopotential height display. The color scheme is a bit difficult to see, so I will change the background color from black to white in the View Color menu. I'm also going to change the width of the contours by clicking on the Geopotential Height field in the legend. This action takes us to the Displays tab of the dashboard. Click the Change Contour button. Here we can vary the line width as well as many other contouring options which we will not talk about at this time. Change the line width from 1 to 3. Click OK. There, we now have more visible contours. Rotate the scene by putting your mouse over the map and dragging the right mouse button. This will give you a better view of the three-dimensional scene. Note the small cube in the lower left corner. This cube would not be present if you had only selected one level. This is your vertical slider where you can examine different levels in the atmosphere. Slowly drag this cube up and down. Okay. 
See the contours changing as you navigate through cross sections in the vertical dimension. Note the legend is also displaying our current level. To reset our plan view, click the rotate to top view button. There are a few other ways you can sele select a specific level in the plan view. Right clicking on the geopotential height field in the legend will reveal a contextual menu with choices that are available in the displays tab of the field selector. Therein you can select the edit levels option and choose the level you want. As you know by now the IDP provides many ways of doing the same thing. Let's go to the displays tab of the field selector. Here you can select a specific level either via the edit levels menu or the drop down menu. We have now covered the subsetting options that are available in the displays panel of the field selector. For more information about the IDV or Unidata, please visit us at www.unidata.ucar.edu. If you have questions, comments, or suggestions about future screencast topics, please contact us at support-idv at unidata.ucar.edu.